Mizuhara, I'm going to be so dead ass, but I got no idea how you keep up with Kazuya's sex drive. Because that boy a freak. Like this one time, I wore a mini skirt to a restaurant, and he got bricked. And I'm talking couldn't stand up bricked. Plus, tell me why he wanted a kiss when he ate shrimp scampi. Like, he might as well have killed me. Like, I thought I was kissing Shrek. Hey, mommy, could you, like, chill? You know, Mizuhara's right there. What you mean, chill? It's not like I'm lying. Ain't that right, Kazuya? What's poppin' y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Now, let me make something perfectly clear. I have no vendetta against women whatsoever. And I already know, that shit makes me sound guilty as shit, but just hear me out. Because I was trying to compile some of the most devious anime characters out there. But uh, when I looked at the lineup, uh, it just turned out to be all females. So with all that up in the air, let me just say this. I would drop kick the shit out of any one of these three. Okay, I might be lying. I'd shoot him. And when you look at the spreadsheet, I mean, it's not looking good. We got one girl who just violates for no reason. We got another that's just making false accusations. And the last one, oh dear lord, we'll get to that one. So sit back, relax, and grab your Tylenol, because shit's about to get toxic. Let go. Now, the first girl on my list is Mami Chan from the anime Rent a Girlfriend. And most of us already know why she's on my list because, let's be honest, this is one trifling ass bitch. But for those of you who do not, I'll give you a little backstory. So the anime starts out with one of the biggest fumbles I've ever seen. Kazi is bragging about how he has a girlfriend, and then Mami Chan immediately dumps his ass. And that's completely fine. Like, during their freshman year of college, you know, some people like to just get around. Like, shit happens. But that pretty much caused Kazuya to go into a state of depression, and then, I mean, shit just went downhill from there. Because this man really started paying $361.19 for a booty. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure Mizuhara is cool as shit, but... <laughs> $361 for an hour? Bro, that is daylight robbery. My no pockets. My pockets. I mean, all I got is my wallet, though. Yeah, give me that. You, okay. Uh. So then we see Kazuya finishing up a date with Mizuhara, but one of his boys notice him, and he's pretty much telling him, hey, you should pull up to this dinner. You won't regret it. So, of course, Kazuya's dumbass goes, I bet. Bro, I kid you not, the moment he got to the restaurant, he only had regrets. Like, Kibe low-key set his ass up. I know he didn't know, but the coincidence is crazy. So now there's this weird atmosphere going on because Kazuya's old shoddy and new shoddy are in the same room. And Mommy decides to break the tension by saying, it's okay, I've already moved on. That shit instantly had Kazuya tweaking. He's like, oh nah, how is that possible? It's been like two days. So that pretty much puts him in a bad mood and he decides to hit the bathroom. And this, this is when shit gets trifling because he comes back to mommy talking to Mizuhara and she's talking crazy. I kid you not, with an outdoor voice, she starts saying, Once we kissed, he wanted it every day, even if lunch had been packed with garlic. And then he tried to hold my hand all the time and take me to pubs that stayed open late for dinner. It was almost impressive just how horny he was. Bro, like, could you imagine your ex was saying this shit in front of your entire friend group? Like, Oh, no, this bitch is trifling, trifling. Oh, so that story about him being bricked at the restaurant? I didn't make that shit up. She really said that. Like, on God, I'd rather you pop my tires. At least then I can get a restraining order. But calling me a horn dog in front of everybody? That's... Oh, oh God. And some of y'all might have the thought, how do you know she's not lying? Bro, this man got locked in a room with a girl trying to steal his virginity and still did nothing. So you tell me. Plus her trifleness does not end there. Cause for some reason, even after all that, my man decides to go to the beach with her and she's trying to get him to cheat the whole time. Bro, at one moment, she really just gave up and kissed him. And she even knew his quote unquote girlfriend was there. Like, no, I'm sorry. You, you just an asshole. Like, was it for attention or were you just jealous? Cause like... Either way, you dumped him. So, get your shit together. That was mommy. Next on my list, I have bitch. Now, some of you might be thinking, Char, I think you mispronounced her name. No, her legal name is bitch. But just for clarification, this is Princess Malty. Not to be confused by Princess Malty. She's, she's innocent. But yeah, Princess Malty is a, is a certified bitch. And for good reason, too. I mean, just think about it. Her own mother legally changed her name. Like, what kind of person you gotta be for your own mother to be your greatest op? I don't know why I'm acting like I don't know, because 
obviously. And you, let's just get into it. Now, we see now for me and three other people being summoned into a fantasy world by the king in order to save it. But for some reason, the moment they get there, nobody really likes now for me. I mean, the three other heroes low key think he's weird. The king is on his ass immediately. And when it's time to form parties, nobody wants to join now for me. And now for me finds this bullshit because. I mean, what the fuck is he supposed to do? And the king is like, aight, who wants to join the shield heroes party? And this is when we see this bitch Malty. Now, I won't lie, in the first half of the episode, she was great. I mean, she was doing what she needed to do. But on the second half, oh nah, she, she was bad shit crazy. I mean, on this man's first night in a brand new world, she robs him of his money robs him of the armor he bought for himself and for her plus spreads a rumor that she got sa'd in her sleep like bruh she even went as far as to plant fake evidence like what is that in all seriousness though this is like a man's worst nightmare like goddamn also giving away his armor to another hero I, bro that's crazy <laughs> so now that bros become the empire's number one predator he's got to figure out a different way to get teammates so he resorts to buying slaves and i know what it sounds like this man has joined the dark side but no uh they actually had a really good relationship but princess melty didn't really like that so one day during a party she decides to tell the spear hero that now for me has been purchasing and abusing slaves and this dumbass doesn't even confirm the situation he just pulls up on now for me and he's like i we gotta fight. Like, I'm sorry, what? Even the other two heroes are like, oh, nah, he really doing that? Like, bruh, R Raftalia is really sitting down eating cake. What kind of abuse are we talking about? Either way, they go on to fight, and now for me is high key beating his ass. Like, bro is getting smoked with a shield. But as now for me is getting ready to finish him off, pause, Malty ends up hitting him from the back, pretty much causing him to lose the fight. So now we see Malty forcing Raftalia to leave his party. She even tried convincing everybody that he had a brainwashing shield. That's why she wanted to stay so bad but thankfully the sword hero and the bow hero pulled up saying nah y'all are bugging did you not just see this man fly like 50 feet and that's pretty much when now for me realized oh uh Malty is the king's daughter which still doesn't really make sense because like why do they have beef but uh yeah after this experience Malty pretty much gives up and uh, decides to become a good person stop the cow <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I'm lying. Uh, this bitch decided to take it a step further. Cause she was no longer trying to just kill off now for me. No, no, that, that, that's, you know, that's not enough. Now we're trying to kill off her little sister. You see that this is, we got to draw the line somewhere. H how does nobody realize this bitch is a villain? And at this point, she wasn't even trying to hide it. Like she was trying to kill her sister in broad daylight. This was the moment everyone realized. I, right, you know what? M maybe we should take a step back. Then after realizing she's bad shit crazy, her mom convicted her of treason. She was about to get executed, but then now for me pussied out like last second. Honestly, now for me's better than me. I would have kept her ass on the chopping block. Uh, see you later, bitch. But uh, yeah, that was Princess Malty. For our final character, I have Rachel Michelle Light. And Rachel's a special case, just because it's really easy to hate this bitch. I mean, I got less dirt on Rachel compared to the other two, but, but nevertheless, she's still at the top. And that's because of two reasons, manipulation and betrayal. And it's not like she's manipulating and betraying a random person, no. Bro, this, this is her best friend. And I personally think this situation is much worse than Princess Malty. Just because Malty didn't give now for me the runarounds. Like, she looked this man in the eye and decided, aight, he gonna get violated tonight. But Rachel? No. She marinated that shit. Really gave an innocent man hope, then spit on his face. Honestly, let me just explain the situation. Now, Rachel and Baum are both in a place called the Tower, and those who climb to the top of the Tower are considered kings, or something along those lines. And one day, while Baum is climbing the Tower, he ends up meeting this girl named Rachel. Now, the thing is with Baum is that when he meets Rachel at this point in the story, Bro has no memories whatsoever. So Rachel's pretty much meeting a fetus. Plus, the Tower is not to be trifled with. I I mean, if you try climbing it and you are not prepared, uh, yo ass is finna get filleted. So with that in mind, Rachel ends up sympathizing with Bum and decides to climb the tower together, which seems sweet as shit. I mean, at that moment, I was sold. Th this is a good person. But sadly, though, shit hit the fan and Rachel started evaporating. I don't know how to explain it any differently because... I mean, look at her, she, she's evaporating. So after watching her go through photosynthesis, Bomb decides, I right, 
I'm gonna climb the tower and I'm gonna find her. But like I said before, it's not really that simple because he had to go through a lot of bullshit just to find her. And I'm talking life or death bullshit. Like the first thing he had to do was fight a dragon. I don't know who made up the rules, but that shit don't seem fair. Then after barely surviving that, he automatically gets entered to play in a battle royale. Like there wasn't a break or consent. They just they just shot his ass in there. Good luck, have fun. Then after barely surviving that as well, all the people that tried killing him turned into his teammates, which somehow worked out. I mean, apparently killing each other is a really good team building exercise. So a few more team building exercises later, and Bomb finally found Rachel. But instead of it being a happy reunion, um, we realized Rachel is fake as shit. Cause Rachel started talking crazy to her teammates saying, it's all right if you kill Bomb. Now hold on, bitch, wait just a damn second. What, what you mean it's okay to kill Bomb? I thought y'all were gonna climb the tower together. Like what, what caused the switch up? But the reason was actually really simple. Rachel found Bomb as a liability and she felt like if she wanted to get to the top of the tower, he was just gonna slow her down. And keep in mind, this is her opinion before she knew he was overpowered. That and uh, she's in a wheelchair because she got stabbed. So, uh, guess who's the liability now? But either way, they go on to make up, and now they're doing their final mission before climbing the tower together. And the mission pretty much required Bomb and Rachel to get eaten by this plant-looking thing while their teammates are defending them. But of course, things go wrong, and we see Bomb defending Rachel with his life. If you notice how she doesn't even have a scratch on her, and this man is like half dead, this next part's gonna piss you off like 10 times more. So there it is, the end of the mission, they can literally see the light at the end of the tunnel. Bomb reaches out for this girl's hand, smiling, elated that they can be together. And what does she do? She pushed his ass off the platform in order to kill him. Bitch, you got me fucked up. He just carried your ass through the whole mission and you tried to kill him? Bruh, and, and y'all wanna know what the reason is for her getting to the top of the tower? It's to see the goddamn stars. Bitch, what are we talking about? She, she tried killing her ride or die for some stars? <laughs> like, bitch, you wanted to see the Big Dipper that bad? I'm done. Get this bitch off my screen.